In this video, we're going to focus on solving polynomial equations by factoring, and also later uh, using synthetic vision. But let's go over the basics. Let's start with uh, binomials, or two terms. If we have this expression, x squared minus 25 is equal to 0, how can we factor it in order to solve for x? So here, we can use the difference of perfect squares. If you have an expression in the form a squared minus b squared, you can express it as a plus b times a minus b. So we're going to do the same thing here. The square root of x squared is x. The square root of 25 is 5. One will be positive and the other will be negative. So that's how you can factor x squared minus 25 using the difference of perfect squares technique. Now once you do that, set each factor equal to 0 and then solve for x. So the first one x is negative 5, and for the second one, it's 5. Now, for the sake of practice, let's work on a few more examples like that. Go ahead and try this one. Solve the equation x squared minus 49 is equal to 0. So the square root of x squared is x. The square root of 49 is 7. And one is going to be positive, the other will be negative. And so let's set each one equal to 0. So we can see that x is equal to negative 7, and x is equal to positive 7. Not bad, right? Now what if we have a number in front of x squared? Let's say if it's 9x squared minus 16. What can we do in this case? Notice that 9x squared is a perfect square, so we can go ahead and factor it. The square root of 9 is 3. The square root of x squared is x. So the square root of 9x squared is 3x. The square root of 16 is 4. And then it's going to be plus and minus. So we have 3x plus 4 is equal to 0. And also 3x minus 4 is equal to 0. So therefore, x is going to equal negative 4 divided by 3. And also positive 4 divided by 3. Now what about this example, 2x squared minus 50? Notice that 2 or 50 is not a perfect square. If you try to square root 2 or 50, you're not going to get a nice whole number. But notice that we can take out the GCF, the greatest common factor, which is 2. If we take away the greatest common factor, we'll be left with x squared minus 25. 2x squared divided by 2 is x squared, negative 50 divided by 2 is negative 25. And now we can use the difference of perfect squares technique to factor it. So therefore, the answer is going to be x is equal to negative 5 and positive 5. Now, what if we have a trinomial where the leading coefficient is 1? How can we factor this expression in order to solve for x? So if you see a problem like this, Consider the constant term 12. What two numbers multiply to 12, but add to the middle coefficient of 7? So we have 1 times 12, 2 times 6, 3 times 4. 3 times 4 is 12, but 3 plus 4 is 7. So to factor it, it's just going to be x plus 3 times x plus 4. So therefore, x is equal to negative 3, and x is equal to negative 4. So now it's your turn. Try this one. Go ahead and solve this equation. x squared minus 2x minus 24. So what two numbers multiply to negative 24 and add to negative 2? So let's make a list. If we divide negative 24 by 2, we get negative 12. If we divide it by 3, we're going to get negative 8. If we divide it by 4, negative 6. 4 times negative 6 is negative 24 but 4 plus negative 6 is negative 2. So we can write it as x plus 4 times x minus 6. So x is equal to negative 4 and positive 6. Try this one. 3x squared plus 12x minus 63 is equal to 0. So what should we do here? 
Notice that 3, 12, and 63 are all divisible by 3. So what we can do is take out the GCF first, which is 3. 3x squared divided by 3 is x squared. 12x divided by 3 is 4x. Negative 63 divided by 3 is negative 21. So now what two numbers multiply to negative 21 but add to 4? This is going to be 7 and negative 3. 7 plus negative 3 is 4. So to factor the expression on the inside, it's going to be x plus 7 times x minus 3. So therefore, we can see that x is equal to negative 7 and positive 3. Let's try one more example where we have a trinomial with a leading coefficient of 1. So now we're going to factor it as usual and solve for x, and then we're going to confirm our answer using the quadratic formula. So what two numbers multiply to positive 27 but add to negative 9? Actually, I may have to uh, change it. Let's change it to 18. So what two numbers multiply to positive 18 but add to negative 9? This is going to be negative 3 and negative 6. Negative 3 times negative 6 is positive 18, but negative 3 plus negative 6 is negative 9. So therefore, the answer to this equation is x is equal to 3 and x is equal to 6. So now let's confirm this answer using the quadratic formula. You need to know that a is the number in front of x squared, so a is 1. Uh, b is the number in front of x, b is negative 9, and c is the constant term 18. So x is negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a. So that's the quadratic formula. So b is negative 9. b squared, that's negative 9 squared. Negative 9 times negative 9 is 81. a is 1 and c is 18. So now let's divide it by 2a or 2 times 1 which is 2. Negative negative 9 is the same as positive 9. And now what is 4 times 18? 4 times 18 is 72. And if we subtract 81 by 72 that's going to give us 9. And the square root of 9 is 3. So at this point, we have two possible answers. We can write it as 9 plus 3 divided by 2. And the other one is 9 minus 3 divided by 2. So 9 plus 3 is 12. And 12 divided by 2 is equal to 6 which is one of the answers that we had before. 9 minus 3 is 6, and 6 divided by 2 is 3. And that's the other answer. So as you can see, you can also use the quadratic equation in order to solve it. So what if we have a trinomial where the leading coefficient is not 1? Let's say if it's 2x squared minus 3x minus 2, and there's no GCF that we can take out. How can we factor this expression? So here's what you need to do. Multiply the leading coefficient by the constant term. So 2 times negative 2 is equal to negative 4. Then find two numbers that multiply to negative 4, but add to the middle term negative 3. This is going to be negative 4 and positive 1. Negative 4 plus 1 is negative 3. So what we're going to do is replace the middle term with uh, 4x, negative 4x, and positive 1x. Now we're going to factor it by grouping. Now here's a question for you. When you have four terms, how can you tell if the factoring by grouping technique is going to work? Look at the ratio of the first two terms and the last two. Negative 4 divided by 2 is negative 2. Negative 2 divided by 1 is negative 2. When you see that, 
you can factor by grouping. In the first two terms, take out the GCF, the greatest common factor, which is 2x. 2x squared divided by 2x is x. Negative 4x divided by 2x is negative 2. For the last two terms, the only thing we could take out is a 1, which means the x minus 2 will be the same. Now, if these two factors are the same, you're on the right track. So let's rewrite x minus 2. And the stuff we see on the outside, the 2x plus 1, that's going to go in here. And so that's how you can factor it. So therefore, we can see that x is equal to 2, and x is equal to negative 1 half. If you move the 1 to the other side, it's going to be negative 1, and then you divide by this number, which is 2. So now let's use the quadratic equation to confirm this result. So it's going to be x is equal to negative b. This is a, this is b, and that's c. So negative b, which is b is negative 3, plus or minus the square root of b squared, negative 3 times negative 3 is positive 9, minus 4 times a times c, divided by 2a, or 2 times 2, which is 4. So the two negatives will make it positive, so we have plus 3. And negative 4 times 2 is negative 8, times negative 2, that's 16. So this is 9 plus 16. 9 plus 16 is 25. And the square root of 25 is 5. So we have these two things. So it's going to be 3 plus 5 divided by 4. And also 3 minus 5 divided by 4. 3 plus 5 is 8. 8 divided by 4 is equal to 2. 3 minus 5 is negative 2. Negative 2 divided by 4 reduces to negative 1 over 2. So as you can see, we get the same answers. Now let's say if we want to factor a difficult trinomial. Let's say 54x squared plus 27x minus 60. In order to factor this trinomial, we need to multiply 54 by negative 60. 54 times negative 60 is negative 3,240. So what two numbers multiply to negative 3,240 but add to 27? Well, that's going to be difficult to find. If you have to factor a difficult expression, you can reverse factor it by using the quadratic formula. So let's go ahead and do that. So this is going to be a, b, and c. So x is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4a c divided by 2a. So what we have now is a negative 27 plus or minus square root. So 27 squared, or 27 times 27, is 729. Negative 4 times 54 times negative 60 is positive 12,960. 2 times 54 is 108. So now what we're going to do is we're going to add 729 plus 12,960. And so if we do that, inside the square root, this is going to be 13,689. Now the square root of that number is 117. So now at this point, we can separate it into two equations. Negative 27 plus 117 and negative 27 minus 117 divided by 108. So negative 27 plus 117, that's equal to 90. And negative 27 minus 117 is negative 144. So we have fractions, which means we need to reduce it. We can divide 90 by 3, that's going to give us 30, 
and 108 is divisible by 3. That's 36. Now we could divide it by 3 again. 30 divided by 3 is 10. 36 divided by 3 is 12. And now we can reduce the fraction even further. 10 divided by 2 is 5. 12 divided by 2 is 6. So one of the answers is 5 over 6. Now let's find the other answer. Now, how can we reduce 144 and 108? You know 12 times 12 is 144. So chances are 108 might be divisible by 12. Let's try it. So negative 148 divided by 12 is negative 12. And 108 divided by 12 is 9. It pays to know the multiplication tables. So now let's divide these two by 3. Negative 12 divided by 3 is negative 4. 9 divided by 3 is 3. So we have fractional answers. How can we convert these fractional answers into a form where we can factor the expression? First, on the first equation, let's add 4 thirds to both sides. We want to put a 0 on the right side. So these two will cancel. And so we'll have x plus 4 over 3 is equal to 0. Next, we're going to multiply both sides by 3 to get rid of the fraction. So 3 times x is 3x. 3 times 4 over 3, the 3's cancel, you just get 4. And 0 times 3 is 0. So this is the first factor. Now here, let's subtract both sides by 5 over 6. So what we have now is x minus 5 over 6 is equal to 0. Now let's multiply both sides by 6. And so this is going to be 6x minus 5 is equal to 0. So now to factor the expression, it's equal to 6x minus 5 times 3x plus 4. Now 6 times 3 is 18. So we have to do something here. We need to get 54. So what we're going to do is multiply everything by 3. Because notice that each of these numbers are divisible by 3. So this should be it. So now let's check it. Let's FOIL the expression. Let's FOIL these two first, and then we'll multiply everything by 3. 6x times 3x is 18x squared. 6x times 4 is 24x. Negative 5 times 3x is negative 15x. Negative 5 times 4 is negative 20. Now, let's combine like terms. 24x minus 15x is 9x. So now we could distribute the 3. 3 times 18 is 54, 3 times 9 is 27, 3 times 20 is 60. So always multiply the first two terms to see if you get 54. If you don't, you need to add the GCF to it. It could be 2 or 3. So divide 54 by 18, you get 3, and simply add 3. And now we get the original expression. So that's how you can like reverse factor it using the quadratic formula. Now, what if we have a cubic polynomial that looks like this? x cubed minus 3x squared minus 4x plus 12. How can we factor this polynomial expression in order to solve for x? So whenever you have four terms, check to see if you can factor by grouping. Negative 3 divided by 1 is negative 3. 12 divided by negative 4 is negative 3. So we can factor by grouping. So let's take out the GCF in the first two terms, and it's x squared. x cubed divided by x squared is uh, equal to x. Negative 3x squared divided by x squared is negative 3. Now for the last two terms, the GCF is negative 4. Negative 4x divided by negative 4 is x. 12 divided by negative 4 is negative 3. So we have two common factors.
x minus 3. And the stuff left over on the outside, x squared minus 4, is going to go inside here. Now, x squared minus 4, we can factor it using the difference of perfect square technique, which is uh, x plus 2 times x minus 2. So therefore, we can see that x is equal to 3, negative 2, and positive 2. So that's how you can factor by grouping if you're given a cubic polynomial with four terms. Try this one. x cubed plus 2x squared minus 9x minus 18. So can we factor by grouping? Let's find out. 2 divided by 1 is 2. Negative 18 divided by negative 9 is 2. So we can factor by grouping. Let's take out the GCF in the first two terms first. It's x squared. x cubed divided by x squared is x. 2x squared divided by x squared is 2. Now, in the last two terms, let's take out a negative 9. Negative 9x divided by negative 9 is x. Negative 18 divided by negative 9 is plus 2. So now, let's take out the common factor x plus 2. If we take out x plus 2, we're going to be left with x squared. And over here, negative 9. So using the difference of perfect squares, we can factor x squared minus 9. The square root of x squared is x. The square root of 9 is 3. And it's going to be plus or minus. So therefore, x is equal to negative 2, negative 3, and positive 3. Try this one. x cubed minus 2x squared minus 5x plus 6. Go ahead and solve the polynomial equation. So let's see if we can factor by grouping. Negative 2 divided by 1 is negative 2, and 6 divided by negative 5 is negative 1.2. So it's not the same. So we can't factor by grouping in this example. So what can we do in a situation like this? This is when you want to use synthetic division. But before you can use it, you should make a list of all the possible zeros that can work. So first, make a list of the possible factors of 6. Possible factors of 6 are 1, 2, 3, and 6. And then divide it by the possible factors of the leading coefficient, which is just 1. So the solutions will contain some of these numbers. So what we're going to do is plug in these numbers and see which one is going to give us 0. It's always best to start at the lowest number because you can check the result quickly. So we're going to plug in 1 into the equation. And we're going to see if the expression is equal to 0. If you have a graphing calculator, and if you're allowed to use it on a test, graph the function and find the x-intercepts. The x-intercepts are the solutions. You can start with one of the x-intercepts and then use synthetic division to find the rest. Now let's work on this example. 1 to the third power is 1. 1 squared is 1 times 2 is just 2. Negative 5 times 1 is negative 5. So 1 minus 2 is negative 1. Negative 5 plus 6 is positive 1. Negative 1 plus 1 is 0. So 1 works, which means 1 is a solution. So what we're going to do is we're going to factor using synthetic division. So the coefficients that you see, 1, negative 2, negative 5, and 6, let's place them on the board. So first, we're going to bring down the 1, and then we're going to multiply. 1 times 1 is 1. Next, we're going to add negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1, and then multiply. 1 times negative 1 is negative 1, and then add negative 5 plus negative 1 is negative 6. 1 times negative 6 is negative 6. 6 plus negative 6 is 0. So make sure you get 0 if you're going to factor the expression using synthetic division. So notice that 1 was a solution. As a factor, it's x minus 1. Now we have an x cubed here. So this is going to go down to x squared. So that's going to be 1x squared. So it's 1x squared minus 1x minus 6. This is the constant term and 0 is the remainder. So that's how you can factor this cubic expression. It's equal to what you see here. So now we have a trinomial with a leading coefficient of 1. So let's find two numbers that multiply to the constant term negative 6 
but that add to the middle coefficient, negative 1. So negative 3 times 2 is negative 6, but negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1. So to factor, it's going to be x minus 3 times x plus 2. So therefore, that's how you can factor cubic polynomials if factoring by grouping doesn't work. So x is equal to 1, positive 3, and negative 2. So these are the solutions to the equations, which is also um, the x-intercepts. If you don't have a graphing calculator, uh, go to Google, just type in online graphing calculator, type in this function, and you should see these x-intercepts. Now this one might be more challenging. Try this one, x to the fourth minus 2x cubed minus uh, 3x squared and plus 14x plus 24. So first, let's make a list of the possible rational zeros. Factors of 24 are 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 8, 12, and 24, divided by factors of 1. So there's a lot of possible zeros in this problem. But let's start with 1. Let's start with the simple ones. So 1 to the 4th minus 2 times 1 cubed minus 13 times 1 squared plus 14 times 1 plus 24. So is that equal to 0? 1 to the 4th is simply 1. Negative 2 times 1 cubed, that's negative 2 times 1, which is negative 2. 1 squared is 1 times negative 13. And then we have 14 and 24. So 1 minus 2 is negative 1. Negative 13 plus 14 is 1. These two cancel, but it adds up to 24, so that's not going to work. Now let's try negative 1. Negative 1 to the 4th power is 1. Negative 1 to the 3rd power is negative 1 times negative 2, that's positive 2. Negative 1 squared is positive 1 times negative 13, and then 14 minus 1 is negative 14, plus 24. So 1 plus 2 is 3, negative 13 minus 14 is negative 27, and 3 minus 27 is negative 24, and if you add 24 to it, you get 0. So negative 1 works, which means that we're going to use synthetic division on it. And let's write the coefficients on the inside. So we have 1, negative 2, negative 13, 14, and 24. By the way, if one of the terms are skipped, let's say if there's no x cubed, make sure you put a 0 in its place. Now let's bring down the 1. Negative 1 times 1 is negative 1. And then add negative 2 plus negative 1 is negative 3. Negative 1 times negative 3 is 3. Negative 13 plus 3 is negative 10 times negative 1, that's 10. 14 and 10 is 24. 24 times negative 1 is negative 24. And make sure you get a 0 on the bottom. So this is going to be 1 less than this. So we're going to start with 1x cubed minus 3x squared minus 10x plus 24. And then this is multiplied to, since you see a negative 1, the factor is x plus 1. So now we have a cubic a polynomial, but we can't factor by grouping. Negative 3 divided by 1 is not the same as 24 divided by negative 10. So we need to use synthetic division on this again. So we need to find another number that goes into it that will make it equal to 0. So now let's put this over here. Let's try 2. And let's plug it into this expression. We don't have to plug it into the original one. If it gives us 0 in this expression, then it's going to be 0 for the expression above. So 2 to the 3rd minus 3 times 2 squared minus 10 times 2 plus 24. Is that equal to 0? Let's find out. 2 to the 3rd power, which is 2 times 2 times 2, that's equal to 8. 2 squared is 4 times 3 is 12. 10 times 2 is 20. And 8 minus 12 is negative 4. 
negative 4 minus 20 is negative 24 plus 24, that's 0. So it does work. So let's use synthetic division with positive 2 and on the surviving expression. So 1, negative 3, negative 10, and 24. So let's bring down the 1. 2 times 1 is 2. Negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. Plus negative 10, that's negative 12. 2 times negative 12 is negative 24. And we do have a 0. So we're going to start with 1 less than 3. So it's going to be 1x squared minus 1x minus 12. And since we use positive 2 here as a factor, it's x minus 2. So what this means is that we can factor this expression with the factors uh, x minus 2 times x squared minus x minus 12. And we still have the x plus 1 on the outside. So now let's factor the trinomial. What two numbers multiply to negative 12 but add to the middle coefficient of negative 1? This is going to be negative 4 and positive 3. So it's uh, x minus 4 times x plus 3. And so we have this. So therefore, there's four answers. x is equal to negative 1, 2, 4, and negative 3. All of these numbers, as you can see, are factors of 24. Now let's say if we have this expression. How can we solve for x? And also, how can we factor it? If you quickly want to get the answer for this problem, simply move the 8 to the other side and take the cube root of both sides. The cube root of x cubed is just x, and the cube root of 8 is 2. And this is going to work. x is equal to 2. But if you want to factor the expression, here's what you can do. You can use this equation. Whenever you have the difference of perfect cubes, it's going to be a minus b times a squared plus ab plus b squared. So the cube root of x cubed is x. The cube root of 8 is 2. And the sign is going to stay the same. So if there's a negative sign here, there will be a negative sign there. Now, a squared is basically x squared. And then ab, x times 2, is just 2x. And make sure the sign changes. Here it's negative, but here it's positive. And then b squared, 2 times 2 is 4. And so as you can see, since we have the factor x minus 2, x is equal to 2. Now, typically you can't factor this expression. I've never seen a case where it can be factored. So uh, usually there's no answer for that. And therefore this is the answer, x is equal to 2. Now, you may have an imaginary answer, but not like a real answer. So let's check for any imaginary solutions. To do that, let's use the quadratic formula. So a is the number in front of x squared, which is 1. b is 2. c is 4. So it's going to be negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared. 2 squared is 4. Minus 4 times a times c divided by 2a, or 2 times 1, which is 2. Now, 4 times negative 4 on the inside is negative 16. And 4 minus 16 is negative 12. Now, how can we simplify the square root of negative 12? Let's focus on that. You need to know that the square root of negative 1 is i. So anytime you have a negative inside a square root with a, an even index number, you're going to get an imaginary number. Now 12, we can break it up into 4, 3, and because we have negative 12, let's use negative 1. The square root of 4 is 2, and the square root of negative 1 is i. So therefore, what we now have is negative 2 plus or minus 2i times the square root of 3 divided by 2. So we can divide each number by 2. Negative 2 divided by 2 is simply negative 1, and 2i divided by 2 is just i. So the answer is negative 1 plus or minus i root 3. So those are the imaginary solutions, and this is the real solution.
So that's what you can do if you have a cubic polynomial. That's in the form of a difference or even sum of perfect cubes. So let's say if we have the sum of perfect cubes. Let's solve for x. So if you're only looking for the real solution and not the imaginary solutions, move the 64 to the other side and then divide by 27. So this is negative 64 over 27. And then take the cube root of both sides. The cube root of negative 64 is negative 4. Because negative 4 times negative 4 times negative 4 three times is negative 64. The cube root of 27 is 3. So the real solution is negative 4 over 3. Now if you want to find the imaginary solution, we have to factor it. So since we have the sum of perfect cubes, it's going to be a cubed plus b cubed is going to be a plus b. So the sign stays the same initially, times a squared minus, this is where it changes, so minus ab plus b squared. So what is the cube root of 27? The cube root of 27 is 3, and the cube root of x cubed is x. The cube root of 64 is 4. So you can see that a is 3x, b is 4. So a squared, which is a times a, or 3x times 3x, that's 9x squared. And then minus ab, 3x times 4 is 12x, plus b squared, or 4 times 4, which is 16. So if you set the factor 3x plus 4, is equal to 0. This will give you the real solution of negative 4 thirds. So now let's use the quadratic equation. a is 9, b is negative 12, c is 16. So it's going to be negative b or negative negative 12 plus or minus b squared. Negative 12 times negative 12 is 144 minus 4 times a times c divided by 2a or 2 times 19 which is 18. So we have positive 12, 144 and let's see 4 times 9 is 36, 36 times 16 is 576. One forty four minus 576 well, that's going to be negative 432 divided by 18. So now, how can we simplify the square root of negative 432? What would you do to simplify it? 432 divided by 2 is 216. And 432 divided by 3 is 144. And 144 is a perfect square. So what I would do is rewrite this expression as 144 times 3 times negative 1. The square root of 144 is 12 and the square root of negative 1 is i. So this is going to be 12 plus or minus 12 root 3 times i divided by 18. So now let's divide each number the two 12s and the 18 by 6 because they're all divisible by 6. So 12 divided by 6 is 2, and 18 divided by 6 is 3. So the answers are negative 4 thirds, which is the real solution, and 2 plus or minus 2 root 3i over 3, which are two imaginary solutions. Now, what if you were to see an expression that looks like this? x to the fourth minus 5x squared plus 4. Even though it's raised to the fourth power, it's in a form of a typical trinomial or a quadratic form. So what you can do is factor by substitution. Let's replace a with the middle term x squared. So if a is x squared, that means a squared is x to the fourth. So what we now have is a squared minus 5a plus 4 which is a typical trinomial. Two numbers that multiply to positive 4 but add to negative 5 are negative 1 and negative 4. 
negative 1 plus negative 4 is negative 5. So at this point, we can replace a with x squared. So now we can factor it further using the difference of squares technique. So x squared minus 1 is x plus 1 times x minus 1. x squared minus 4 is x plus 2 times x minus 2. So therefore, x is equal to negative 1, positive 1, negative 2, and 2. So that's how you can factor an expression that's in quadratic form. By the way, if you want to find more videos on algebra, even other topics like trig, pre-cal, chemistry, physics, check out my website, video-tutor.net, and you can find a playlist to those videos. Thanks for watching.